you can take your pick and without even knowing the model in your mind, I can confidently say that it's going to be available in Snowflake Cortex. So we are the only AI platform that can claim this at this point. Hi, I'm Arun and I'm from the AI product marketing team. And today I'm really excited to have two of my dear friends here, Yusuf, who is the director of engineering for AI, and James, who is one of the DevRel leaders for AI. And today we want to talk about large language models. We want to talk about why Snowflake offers different large language models within its platform and how enterprises can make use of these large language models for their AI applications. We'll also show you a really cool demo, so let's jump in. Let's start with you, Yusuf. So we are seeing new models being released in the market continuously. If I were an enterprise, how should I be thinking about model selection when it comes to AI applications? So when we look at different uh, tasks that our customers are uh, working on, we see that different models are good for different tasks. Uh, OpenAI's GPT models uh, have broad appeal and, and good for general knowledge. Uh, when you look at Anthropic Cloud model, it is uh, widely accepted as the best coding model available. And then, uh, for example, Mistral made a lot of pr great progress on uh, multilinguality and specific domains. So when we look at AI applications today, uh, what we are observing is for different uh, tasks in, in a pipeline, you will end up using different models. Uh, for example, uh, you can think of uh, one model for uh, question interpretation, then another uh, model for code generation, and then once the code is generated and you have an output, interpreting that output and generating an answer can be uh, another model. That sounds great. James, uh, two things. One, I would love to know the different types of models that Snowflake offers. And two, if there's a cool demo that you can show us about this, I would love that. Yeah, I could do both at once. So let's go ahead and dive into Cortex Playground. As a user, I can go ahead and have access to all the models that uh, we have within Snowflake. Here, I have Claude up and open. And then we have this comparison function. So if I want to explore, try out DeepSeek, try out OpenAI, as well as many other models that we do have, I can go ahead and have quick access to that. Additionally, we have some Snowflake optimized models as well. And for me, in terms of a use case for us, I'm doing a book report for, with my son. I really want to know a lot about, or a little bit about, uh, snowflakes. So I'm going to go ahead and ask it to summarize this paragraph I found in the middle of the internet. As we see here, we get two different outcomes from the LLMs. Sonic provides a really nice paragraph about what I've provided to it. And the Snowflake Llama actually provided like bullet points of what I need to learn, what I would need to know about Snowflakes in general. From this output and the speed of this, it looks like the Snowflake team has done a lot of optimizations. Yusuf, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, we have a, a dedicated team on inference optimization that, that is continuously improving the, the inference performance and the throughput of these models. And we'll, we'll keep that going, basically. Like right now, you're showcasing uh, the, uh, this on Llama, but we are also working on multiple different ar architectures as well. This is an ongoing uh, thing for us. It's not only the availability of the models, of course, it's, right. it's what you can get out of those models as well, and that will keep improving as well. That's awesome. That gives me all the access I need to be able to do what I need to get done. It's amazing. So Yusuf, it sounds like having the choice of large language models is really good for the enterprises. I would love to understand what are some of the common use cases that you are seeing where enterprise users need more than one type of large language model. Of course. So two things that we are hearing from customers a lot is one data agent, uh, which would require orchestration, code generation, answer generation uh, as a follow-up to that, and then uh, unstructured data analytics, which again would require mu multiple models multi for multiple tasks. This can be OCR, chunking, answer generation again, handling different types of documents in, in different ways, basically. Another thing is, with all these tasks being required for all these use cases, ease of use is also top of mind for our customers as well. This is why the uh, demo that uh, James has shown is, is so key to here. It, it needs to be very easy to be able to compare these models across these different tasks. That's amazing. So I can see that comparison is easy. James, for a non-technical user like myself, how easy is it to implement these large language models within Snowflake? So because of our how we structured our APIs, it's a quick swap of a, a variable to be able to switch from Mistral to uh, OpenAI's models as well as Claude's models. So in terms of whatever you're trying to get done, if you want to test out different ones, so that way you get that most optimized model for your use case, you can quickly and easily do that. 
That sounds incredible. Thanks, James. I'm sure we are talking about enterprise. We are talking about data. Top of mind is security and governance. How should we be thinking about that when it comes to Snowflake? Yeah, when it comes to security and governance, two things are, are key here. One, all these models that we have been talking about, the models that James showcased, are available in the security parameter for Snowflake for all our customers. Mm -hmm. The second thing about governance is the, the key here is to have the right tooling and capabilities available to our customers so they can pick and choose uh, uh, the uh, right capabilities for governance because this is not a one-size-fits-all uh, set up for, for governance in general. So we can talk about um, input governance, for example, and making sure that the, uh, the right data is accessible to the right models. Uh, usage governance, making sure that uh, you have control over who can access what model and you can do monitoring on top of that. And then finally, for output governance, we can talk about guardrails and uh, having observability set up in your system so that in production, you can continue monitoring how your models are behaving. And Snowflake makes all of this uh, easily available uh, to your customers. The important thing to also mention here is that at this point, you can take your pick and without even knowing the model in, in your mind, I can confidently say that it's going to be available in Snowflake Cortex. So we are the only AI platform that can claim this at this point. Uh, and this will give peace of mind to all our customers to know that whatever their tasks are, the best model for that will be available in Snowflake. That's amazing. That brings a lot of peace of mind uh, to the users, I'm sure. Thanks, Yusuf. And uh, thank you, James. This was a really interesting discussion for me. So Snowflake is the only platform that brings all of these wide variety of large language models from Anthropic, OpenAI, Mistral, Meta, et cetera, in a single platform. And you can access these models with a single function. It comes with the security that you would want for enterprise use cases. And if you want to learn more, check out the resources in the link below. If you want to learn more about uh, data agents, or if you want to learn more about unstructured data insights, check out our other videos. And with that, thank you so much.